So back in 2018, you purchased a brand new modified and ever since then you've been really quick everywhere you've gone. In fact, last year you got four top tens in the last five races you raced. But as the driver behind the wheel, how do you feel that your 2020 season went? Uh, we were good at the start. We, I mean, we, first three nights in Dickinson, we ran top four every single night. And then, you know, we were running, we were passing for a second there that one night in Dickinson and we got in the tango with Tomlinson there. And ever since that night, it felt like something was off. And there's, I kept finding, you know, I went through the whole car, but I kept finding things here and there that were dragging and binding. And I don't know if that was to it. And, you know, by the end of the year, Finally, at the end of the year, I finally tore everything apart, you know, and I found some more things wrong in the bird cages and a couple of the shocks I was running were actually bad, but there was no way to tell them that, you know, until I got them sent off, even, you know, even running around Dino, they, they looked to be right, but they, you know, they weren't. And so I don't know, I mean, it definitely had its ups and downs. We, you know, I struggled in Mandan and Mandan was different. I feel like the track was different the second half of the year, you know, after they put that different dirt in and I just, I struggled to get a hold of it, you know, and I was so... Like this car, I was so good through the middle and high, you know, the first year I got it that I just I beat it to death trying to go stay up there. And I mean, it did, it wouldn't work. And, you know, there was, there was definitely a lot more crumbs and stuff in Mandan. And I think I was just, I was definitely way over driving, you know, because I, things did go so good. And, you know, at the end of the year when I bought this thing. And so I don't know. I mean, it was a definite up and down year. I wasn't, I, by, I wasn't happy by any means, you know. So I'm really working hard on the off season here. We're going to try to, you know, last year we were going to do it, try to travel down south or whatever, as, you know, about a month before it starts up here. We really want to try to do that again this year, you know, and see if we can get, you know, knock the dust off <laughs> a little earlier than we did last year. But Well, racing season is just around the corner. Uh, what are you currently working on right now with yourself and the race car to prepare for the upcoming season? Oh, uh, yeah, like me, I'm just, I don't know. Right now, actually, I've been working more on his go-kart the last two weeks because he's got that race coming up. and. You know, it, he practiced a little bit at the end of the year when we got it going for him, and he, surprisingly, he's you know taking it really well, and he's he's flying around for how little he is, and so I want to you know give him the opportunity to do that. So we I worked on his car, we're gonna run up there next week to Watford, let him go, and then uh, with my car, I've just been slowly getting parts back now that we had refreshed. We got the carburetor back, so I'll probably put that on. We got the uh, shocks back. We'll put you know start putting them on. I just put the new brake rotors and stuff like that, but. The body, it's, I've had that done for a while now, but was, as soon as we get the bolt-ons put back on, we'll start putting that on. And, you know, hopefully we want to wrap things up with sponsorship, try to by, you know, February and stuff so we can get the wrap designed. We have a pretty good idea what we're going to do there, but, I mean, still you got to have who's going to be on the car returning and if we can pick up any new, you know, sport or anything like that, helping the businesses out. But. Well, you are a second-generation race car driver. How did you get your start in dirt track racing? I'm actually a fourth, which is crazy. Okay, yeah, so. so my dad's dad and my dad's grandpa also raced too, so which makes me the fourth, hopefully him being the fifth. I, uh, my start was, you know, when I was little, I went around the racetrack just a little bit because my dad only, my dad retired when I was five that first time and, you know, growing up, I always wanted to be around the races and he officiated and stuff around Dickinson, so I still kind of grew up there and I remember a little bit, but, you know, I grew up under the, your Jay Tooley's kid, you know, he, he's amazing, he's, you know, a great late model racer, great modified driver, so, you know, that's all I ever wanted to do, but I, you know, at that time, like I said, my dad kind of retired, money was tight and stuff like that, so there was no way I, we could afford it without sponsors or anything like that, and sponsorship was tight, I think that was kind of the end of the first boom, so I went to, my dad was, you know, go play sports, you know, get to college, get a good job, and I did that, you know, and I went, went and played baseball, got scholarships, got an awesome job, I was just getting ready to get a car built for me, and then that's when I had my, you know, neck injury with my strokes and my brain and stuff, and, you know, that kind of set everything back, you know, I thought the dream was done, and then, uh, after two years of kind of living, well, that's when my dad, I talked my dad back into getting a car, and he only, I mean, he had no desire to race, he, his competitive edge was gone, he was only doing it for me, and he knew, I mean, it frustrated him more, I think, to see that he wasn't, you know, as competitive as he used to be, I'm not saying that he wasn't right there, you know, he had a couple wins, but, so I was like, screw it, I don't care what these doctors say anymore, I mean, I'm not going to live my life in fear, and, you know, that's what I did, and went out, and to be actually be able to purchase my first car, I went, I went and played in a poker tournament with some buddies in Dickinson, and bought it for 100 bucks and left with three grand, and then got a hold of the Walrus, and that's why, I, you know, she's my main sponsor, and been my first sponsor, and I said, hey, I'm going to go buy a car in Minneapolis, and I think it was like 4,500 bucks, so I needed a couple hundred bucks just to be able to buy the roller. She's like, for sure, I'm on board, you know. So that's, 
that's where I got it and ever since then, you know, I've been hooked for sure. And, you know, jumping into modifieds right away, a lot of people, you know, that's dumb, that's stupid, you shouldn't do that. And, and I get that, and, you know, I, and I don't agree too. I mean, I worked on cars for a few people, for Elvis and Teelan and Mike Hansen, and, you know, Mike kind of took me under his wing a little bit and taught me things. And then we actually had a test in tune and I hopped in my dad's car and Mike was out there practicing in Dickinson and he's like, you know, you're not going to drive one of these. And I, I kind of stuck with him a little bit, you know, I always say, well, I'm sure I was a second off the pace each lap, but I felt like I stuck with him, you know, and he, he kind of followed me for a few laps and he's like, you definitely need to get into modified He goes, you're just going to, you know, waste time getting into a sport mod or anything like that and learn bad habits. So that's where I went out and I got that car and, you know, the first two years really, I just ended up getting, you know, two wins that second year, but the first two years really, I just had, I was just out there trying to better my, you know, learn still everything of how the cars work and how they, you know, trying to earn respect, not getting anybody and be able to race door to door with some guys and obviously move out of the way and know they're faster. Now I think I've earned that respect and, you know, I I feel like I'm a car to win at any time of night. And I, I mean, that's what my goal is. I, I plan to win every single night, you know, that's where I want to be. You know? Well, it's kind of a miracle that you are here today and you're actually racing behind the, the wheel. How extra special is it to be in a race car when Dr. Call, I told you, you wouldn't be able to do sports or let alone racing? Well, actually, you know, it's, I actually feel like I'm safer in my race car than I am, you know, driving on the street in there. I have a containment seat and I'm strapped in tight and I get the head restraint and all that stuff. And my head can barely move, you know, where if I'm driving down the road, someone runs a red light, T-bones me, it'll probably kill me, you know, because it'll probably snap my neck so hard where it can retear those arteries and... So I don't know, I mean, to be, yeah, to be in a car is, like I said, is, it's, every day it's a dream. You have a cute little boy, Jax, and he's currently already following in your footsteps. What are you currently doing to grow his love for dirt track racing? <laughs> to be honest, I'm trying to get him out of it because that's all he talks about, does, and cares about, and he needs to concentrate more on preschool and stuff like that, learning more, but I mean, I know, I know what it is. I mean, that's how I was my parents when I was little, and I, I'm pretty sure that's how his mom, his mom was when she was little too, you know, and, and uh, but no, we're, we, uh, I bought him this cart last year and in the summer and he's been wheeling around and obviously I think he's doing really well and if, you know, some people have seen some videos and they think he's doing really well for only a four and a half. I did do some pretty big modifications to where he could reach the pedals, but <laughs> honestly, I mean, if he wants to keep doing it, he can do it. I mean, I'm not going to push him, you know, if, if he wants to go play hockey or baseball instead, I mean, that's up to him, man. but I'm definitely not gonna say no to a race car and I'm gonna do everything I can to, like I said, to try to get him into it. I, you know, I wish they ran some slingshots and stuff around here, but I think, I don't even know if you'd fit in one of them, but I think this is a good start on this go-kart deal and it's even cheaper. And I, I really like what, you know, Hardigan's and Burwick's did and Dickinson getting that kind of going and I'm, I'm happy. Looking forward to the 2021 season. What are your goals going into the new year? Um, like I said, I, we, I Hope we can go down maybe maybe Kansas, Nebraska, something like that, and maybe make a weekend trip on it. Like I said, it all depends on work, shift work. It's so hit and miss if I can make some days line up. And obviously with him now, you know, and it's I want to take him with, but he's also a handful too at this point because he wants to be. He wants. It's not that he's hard to watch; he's easy, but he just wants to be in and everything and learn. And sometimes, and, but uh, you know, with him, he's in preschool right now. So I've always my son's always came first to me, you know. So. But my big goals, like I said, I, I hope to win at least another feature in Dickinson and Man and it'd be nice to have a feature on each track, you know, this year. And like I said, I, my plan is to at least be top five every single night if I can be in making a shot, I mean, making a run at the feature win at least every single night. Or, you know, if I start for some reason, have a bad heat race, start really deep, get up to the top five. And that's definitely a goal. Mm -hmm. If it works out to where I can make all the nights, maybe in Dickinson, I think I, I already looked and I, I can't make all the nights in Mandan. And I don't think there's any way possible as of now, but if I can make every night in Dickinson, it'd be cool to go for a track championship, you know? But that's definitely the goal is to stay in the top five no matter what.